You ever wonder how to get those vibrant colors when you're staining? Maybe you're staining a guitar or you want to do some cool Shoshugi Bond projects. Or maybe you just want to build something that involves some vibrant colors. Well, stick around because I'll show you what product I'm using, how to mix your own custom colors, and how to apply it to your projects. So we're going to be using a product called Kita Alcohol Liquid Dye. And they offer this five color dye kit which includes red, yellow, blue, brown, and black. One cool part about this dye kit is you can mix your own custom colors from these primary colors. For example, if you want green, you would mix the blue and yellow together. If you want orange, you mix the red and yellow. And if you want purple, you'd mix the red and blue together. Kita also has a YouTube channel which explains not only how to mix custom colors, but also techniques on how to apply the dyes too. So if you decide to go with the Kita dye, I recommend checking out their website and or their YouTube channel for additional instructions on how to use this stuff. I'll put links in the description for both. Now with this dye, they recommend mixing it with lacquer thinner, acetone, denatured alcohol, and each mixing agent is going to give you a slightly different outcome with the vibrancy of the colors. And if you want to see some tests of these different outcomes, the channel Build Dad Build has a fantastic video where he does a bunch of tests with these different mixing agents and shows the different effects that each mixing agent has in the vibrancy of the colors. I'll put a link in the description for that. For this video, we're going to be mixing the dyes with water. I just prefer using water over thinner or acetone because in my opinion, it's easier and less hazardous to work with. Just remember though, if you use the water, you'll be raising the grain a little bit. Now, we're going to be making six different dye stains today. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And you can customize these colors even further if you want. Like, for example, if you want a more bluish green or a reddish orange, depending on the mixing ratio of the dyes. But for the sake of this video, we'll just stick to the basic colors. So on the dye bottles, it states to use a half a teaspoon of dye for every six to eight ounces of the mixing agent. I'm going to be using about three ounces of water here, so naturally we would just want to cut those ratios in half to a quarter of a teaspoon, right? Well, sort of. So when I was testing this stuff out, I noticed that the cooler colors, green, blue, and purple, had significantly different outcomes in terms of how vibrant they were when compared to the red, orange, and yellow colors after I put a couple of coats on each. So after playing around with the mixing ratios of the dyes, I came to the conclusion that if you add twice the amount of blue that they recommend, your cooler colors will be vibrant after three or four coats. So for the red and yellow, I'll be using the recommended quarter of a teaspoon to my three ounces of water. And for the orange, I'll mix an eighth of a teaspoon of the red and an eighth of a teaspoon of the yellow. Now for the blue, remember we're going to double up on the ratio and instead of the recommended quarter of a teaspoon per three ounces of water, I'm going to mix in a half a teaspoon. For the green, I'm mixing a half a teaspoon of the blue and a quarter teaspoon of the yellow. And for the purple, I'm mixing a half a teaspoon of the blue and a quarter teaspoon of the red. And if you're using water like I am here, Kita recommends that you use warm water. Also, after mixing, you want to let the dyes sit for around 30 minutes or so so that the dyes can get acclimated to the water. So while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to do some Shoshugi Bond burning to give some of these boards some really cool contrast in the grain. And if you want to watch my tutorial that goes way more in depth on different Shoshugi Bond burning techniques, I'll put a link in the description for that. Before I burn the wood, I like to look at the grain pattern because that's going to give you an idea of how the burned grains are going to be laid out. Now here you'll see that I'm burning the wood very slowly. I'm going for a very dark burn and the reason for this is the more that I char the wood, the easier it'll be for my drill brush to dig out the grain. And the more grain that I dig out, the more texture the wood's going to have. The brush I'm using here is a nylon drill brush that I picked up at my local home store. You can use a handheld brush, but this is much quicker and easier. Also, make sure that your batteries are fully charged because your drill is going to be constantly running and depending on how many boards you're doing, you may go through a few batteries. Now, the one thing that I've noticed when brushing is the more you brush and clean up the soot from the wood, the more vibrant your colors will show on the wood after you put on the dye. And another thing that I learned is soot gets everywhere. Before I start putting the dye in, I'm going to wipe off any leftover soot on the boards because again, the cleaner the wood, the more vibrant the colors are going to be. And if you don't have any rags, old t-shirts make fantastic staining rags. Now on your first coat, the wood is really going to soak up the dye. So I immediately put on another coat and that's when the color is going to start turning more vibrant. After putting all the color on, I let the board sit for about 20 minutes or so and then put on another coat.
Now for the red, orange, and yellow mixes, this was good enough. No more coats needed and I was happy with the vibrancy of the colors. But for the green, blue, and purple mixes, I let them sit again for 20 minutes and then put on an additional coat. After letting the board sit overnight, I decided to put some water-based satin polyurethane on to finish them off. Unfortunately though, I had to move the entire project into my basement since it's about 30 degrees out in the garage today. I went ahead and put two coats of the polyurethane on each board, waiting about four hours between the coats. And here are the results. Really happy with how the colors turned out here, especially on the burn boards. The contrast between the colors and the burnt grain looks amazing. So my thoughts on everything. Well let's start off with some math explaining what you get for your money. As I said earlier, the kit costs around $60 at the time of making this video. You get 5 bottles of dye and each bottle has about an ounce of dye in it. And an ounce is about 6 teaspoons, so in other words you get about 6 teaspoons per bottle. If you mix the recommended amount of a half a teaspoon to 6 to 8 ounces of your mixing agent of choice, that will give you 72 to 96 ounces of stain to work with, or about 2 and a quarter to 3 quarts per bottle of dye. However, that is with the red and yellow dyes. Remember, with the blue dye or any other color that can contain the blue, I doubled down on the ratio. That means that instead of a half a teaspoon, you would need one teaspoon of blue dye per six to eight ounces of your mixing agent, which would come out to about 36 to 48 ounces of mixed stain or about one and an eighth to one and a half quarts per bottle. Now I haven't tried the brown or black dyes yet, but let's assume that we would follow the recommended mixing ratios of a half a teaspoon per six to eight ounces, yielding the same amounts as the red and yellow dyes. And let's say that you're mixing a little on the heavier side like I was, meaning you would mix a half a teaspoon to 6 ounces versus the half a teaspoon to the 8 ounces of the mixing agent. You would yield a total of around 10 and 1 8 quarts of mixed stain between all of the colors combined. And this is assuming that you're not mixing dyes together to make any custom colors. Now at the time of making this video, a quart of Minwax stain is around $13 at my local home store. So 10 quarts of Minwax is around $130 versus the 10 and 1 8 of a quarts you'd yield from the mixed dye kit, which is around $60 on Amazon. However, usually I get my desired results from about one to two coats of the Minwax versus two to three coats that I needed to put on with the dye to get the results that I wanted. So all in all, I think that the price is fair, plus I can't find stain colors in my local home store like these. Which brings me to my next point, the colors. I was really impressed with the vibrancy of the colors, especially the warmer ones, hence red, orange, and yellow. The cooler colors turned out great as well, but I wasn't impressed with the fact that I had to double down on the blue. So would I recommend these dyes? Yeah, I'd recommend. I mean, the dyes were easy to work with. That is, once I figured out the correct ratio for the blue and the cooler colors, the price was fair and the results were great. And if anyone has any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Also, remember to check out this video if you want to watch a more in-depth tutorial on wood burning techniques. Take care.